All right. Uh, so how's everybody doing again? So we're back here. Um, <clears throat> mainly, I decided to uh, summon here on uh, LQC because, for one, the upcoming... Well, you can't see it now, but they've already released him to us. Um, yeah, like We've got the details on him, but he's, like, he's not in here. Um, which is ML Calric, uh, or uh, what is it, Mediator Calric. Uh, he's pretty underwhelming, mainly. I, get, I mean, I can kind of do a review of him, but there's really no need to, considering everybody probably has already talked about, you know, how, like, bad he is. How bad he looks, anyway. I, I mean, personally, I'm waiting to see... <clears throat> I'm waiting to see um, Shotgun Shogun just die on a hill again, uh, trying to defend to people <laughs> that he's, like, the best unit ever released, and then, um, you know, <laughs> what it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, so... I mean that's all that's in terms of Calric, that's basically all I'm waiting for is is for uh, Shogun's video. Um, I don't even subscribe to him, so I don't know what his thoughts are on him initially. Uh, he may or may not, you know, who knows what he's doing right now. But like I said, um, that's the only interesting part of Calric is is waiting for that video and then watching like <clears throat> him spew nonsense for half an hour trying to convince people to uh, buy something worthless. Um, but yeah, so LQC, the, the, the main reason is because like I said, ML Calric is looking kind of whatever, though I think problematically, um, is he worth a pity? If you're summoning him, it's probably because you have LQC and you're probably going to like, if you have LQC, you're going to wait till he comes and you can see who comes after him. And if you summon, it's probably because you already have him and you're like, you don't mind, um, having him there. Uh, and second of all, it's because <clears throat> you're investing in a future buff. So you're investing in him now because you'll, you'll probably get buffed eventually, which I think he will. Uh, what, <clears throat> how they're going to buff him, who knows. His kit is very disparate. Like, his S3 cleanses into a immunity and attack buff, which is fine, which is, you know, it's good, right? It's like, you can't complain about that. But his other two skills are basically worthless. He's got like an S2 that... Uh, He's got an S2 that decreases attack, so anything that has decreased attack on it, you already know is, like, you're not supposed to kill with it, right? You're just supposed to decrease attack, which, okay, that's fine, <clears throat> right? Because um, either you kill him or you don't, and having him decrease attack is like, oh, it'll bring your survivability up, but, you know, who cares? Especially because it's a single target, I think. And his S1, I forgot what his S1 did, but it's also just equally underwhelming. Like, neither of his skills do anything. He's got health scaling, which is, I guess, all right. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. The, the ability to, to grant immunity and attack buff is, is pretty good, but it's not like... He's just not on the level we've seen with a lot of these other ones. Like, take Little Queen Charlotte, for example. If we're taking if we're doing a raw comparison, uh, Little Queen Charlotte has a built-in 15% uh, adamant shield on everyone, plus 30% on herself. Uh, and then she gets... Uh, what's it called? She gets a 15% combat readiness boost, which is basically just uh, Ravi's thing right <clears throat> all in her s2 like just her passive like that's way more just like if that's all she did that would be way more beneficial to your team than like uh a cleanse into a immunity that calric offers especially considering um what's her name uh made chloe just got her buff which gives immunity or not immunity gives uh cleanses to attack buff and uh revive buff all in the same turn uh, while also being tanky enough to give a lot of healing and do all kinds of other stuff along with that, uh, but maybe and maybe this is just me because I I've been pairing Little Queen Char uh, Little Queen Charlotte I've been pairing uh, Maid Chloe with um, ML Crow or uh, what's his name what's her name um, Cecilia I've been pairing her with Immunity so maybe the idea that like you can remove those two and just run him by himself is probably better but really you're not getting the value out of anything else right so little queen uh, uh ml made chloe does have the attack buff and the cleanse but she also has revive and then constant team revive and then constant healing and then a bunch of uh effect resistance right so like there's more going on than that unfortunately the problem and then you know on the other half the person providing immunity is either ml crow which is dishing out a huge amount of damage um and providing shields on top of that uh, but also, uh, if you're running CC, you're running a lot of, well, funnily enough, CC, you're running a lot of crowd control, so you got, like, provokes and all that other stuff. 
Uh, the thing with with ML Cowork is you run him, and then you still have to build around him, and you can't like you can't run ML. Well, you can, right? But you know, why would you want to run ML Crow or or uh, CC with him if you've already got the immunity and the cleanse built in? Or like now, I can't run I can't run another attack buffer because he's got the attack buff on him. So that kind of limits your unit. So when your unit does certain things, kind of in a in a weird way, it becomes less valuable to use other units with him, right? So Maid Chloe. She has a cleanse, so it's valuable to run someone with immunity on her. So, you know, that's why it encourages you to run someone like uh, uh, ML Crow or, or what's her name, or, or someone else. And, like, that's, you know, yeah. So that's something to consider. Uh, like I said, you can run her, and again, maybe it depends on your box. Maybe that's very valuable to you. Like, for me, having another cleanse into immunity, especially because I have ML Basar as well, or, yeah, ML Basar as well, is kind of worthless because... Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got way too many cleanses into immunity, and then it's like, okay, that one gives you attack buff, but, like, who cares? Because, um, you know, the healing from Basar is a lot better anyway. Most of the time, uh, depending on RTA, usually if you get cleaved, you get cleaved, so the healing doesn't matter, but... Anyway, to my account, having her would be better, especially because I've switched a lot of my knights over to Aureus rather than Adamant Shield. Uh, mainly because, for one, you know, I'm kind of, I was thinking about her a little bit, as well as uh, running Draco Plates and whatnot. Um... Yeah, people running Draco Plate, it's like it doubles up with the Adamant Shield, and it's not really that's not a good thing. Uh, but now maybe I can just run her, and uh, yeah, there you go, run her and have her um, provide while being a, a hard nuker as well. And then, of course, this got buffed. This used to be only against dark units, but now everyone gets fifty percent penetrated for those of you who run against uh, Remnant Violet. <laughs> you know how annoying that can be. Um, and then, of course, the S one does a decent amount of damage. Uh, the other reason I wanted to pull for her is because I actually started looking and I have a pretty decent gear set. I'm not going to say it's the best, but for those of you who watch uh, Shuffles' uh, videos, uh, he has like the, the best of series and he had like a build of her. And basically it was exactly what I what I had gone for. Of course, his, he's, since he's got better gear, since he's got better gear, it's obviously going to be better than what I have. But uh, here he is actually. Um, now... He's, di he's going to be different. Not only is he a four star, but he's also just like a different warrior, but similar kind of like idea. Running speed with immunity and then just like a bunch of crit damage and attack percentage. Um, hopefully with her five star stats and like... Actually, she has less health than him, so I have to figure out... I mean, some of these pieces are going to, are going to get replaced. Like this is going to be replaced by a, a hell raid sword because the health... I value the health a little more than like the 6% crit damage here. Um... But yeah, so basically the point is, I've got a decent gear set that I would be okay running on her. Uh, and right now Corvus is holding it just to hold on to it. So like he's kind of a stand-in. He was, he was a stand-in for her while I was thinking about whether I wanted to summon or not. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's enough like uh, preliminary stuff for no real reason. Uh, let's get into actually summoning. Um, well, I guess a little more. Uh, the, the main reason I'm summoning, I'm summoning now and not like the first rotation uh, or this next rotation... Uh, is because for one, Ravi merges are never a bad thing. Um, she only gives herself defense, but that's all right. Um, Song of Stars is kind of whatever, so I really don't care too much. Uh, but more more lots is, is good because uh, both of my lots aren't triple S imprinted, which or could be useful, especially because of the new. Um, I want to use them in the new uh, the new expedition. Uh, I have way too many roses, uh, way too many of like all this other crap. Uh, I could use more of this, I guess, but not really a priority and. Uh, Carrots here. A lot of people, I know a lot of people are summoning for carrot because SC carrot is strong right now. Uh, but I already have my triple S imprinted carrot and she's been max like, she's, she's been maxed out since like she came out. Uh, I just haven't had a reason to use her, but now thanks to how strong she is, <laughs> she's a lot more fun to use. Uh, but yeah, so that's that. Um, let's, uh, let's get in here and start summoning without, uh, delaying too much. I think, uh, as a sort of as an aside, I guess. Oh, I actually, hold on, I'm about to pause this recording. Please be an artifact. Okay, cool. I will be right back. I need to go uh, fill up my box real quick. Uh, all right, we're back again. Um, yeah. Funnily enough, uh, LQC is also like probably one of the better counters for like ML Zerato because you can bring like a you can bring like a full on like de um, debuff team, and then it's just like okay, they're gonna pick. Uh, ML Zerato, and then like at the end, you just pick, uh, you just pick LQC, and suddenly it's like, just completely negated his entire impact on the game. And I can't skip this, so it's something new. 
Song of Stars? Oh, did I? I might not have changed the settings here. I have more Caladras. Uh, I'm not sure who's coming next in the uh, in the rotation after the ML Calric, but uh, we'll, we'll we'll see soon enough, and we'll see if I want to hit pull for them. Uh, after ML Calric is a repeat, so if I've like, in terms of repeats, like if I've gone this far without one that's already been out before, then I think I'm I'm all right, right? It's not like it's not that big a deal. Uh, of course, I say that, and um, the next one's probably going to be a Tywin, <laughs> just because it's me. Um, though, even if it did come out, it would kind of be a little more irritating than not, uh, just because, like, I don't have the gear for a Tywin. Um, yeah, I don't really have the gear for a Tywin right now, so I'd have to figure out what to, what to do with him. Uh, so if we get one Ravi, I consider this a victory. Come on. Uh, if I, yeah, I mean, if I get one a Ravi, or one regular Ravi, I consider this a, uh, complete win. And A, I got lots, which is... Out of all the other four stars, it's the only one I wanted, so that's pretty cool. Um, so we got about 10 summons to pull for Ravi. Now, the other... Unfortunately, the problem with uh, with uh, this rotation currently is the idea that um, Silk, Wanderer Silk, is on the... Uh, is it Wanderer Silk? I guess we'll see. Anyway, ML Silk is on the other side. Come on, Ravi. ML Silk is the uh, four star, which I, I really need uh, less of. Is it Wanderer Silk? I just wanted to know. Yeah, it is. Which I really don't need because I have a regular Silk and a Wanderer Silk Triple S. And then on top of that, I still have just a bunch of leftovers in my box somewhere. In the box of the waiting room, I can't remember exactly. Uh, but yeah, like this box is amazing. It's just like limitless space. It's like I don't got to worry about it. Oh, come on, Ravi. You know you want to come out. Now, theoretically, I should be saving them for, like, ML Ravi, but, I mean... I've, I wanted her when she came out and a little bit after, and then I wanted her more when she got buffed. Uh, but lately, I've just, like, not been too interested in her just because her playstyle is really slow. It looks kind of interesting for sure just uh i don't know like i've never had any problems fighting against ravis and every time i watch like you, every time we watch tournaments i mean despite shuffles constantly complaining and like never shutting up about how ravi's like the most broken unit that's ever been and she like least of all of anyone deserved the buff she got and blah 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 and so on and so forth right despite all his nice despite all his like words and all his <laughs> uh, human noise that he can produce uh, she's just not that strong uh, she doesn't come out in very many uh, RTA tournaments like big deal tournaments um, yeah she just doesn't do very much so I don't know maybe maybe I just don't watch enough tournaments or maybe I'm just not paying attention I haven't been watching like the the world championship but I know like Arby is the most chosen uh, Spectre Tenebria and like a bunch of other these and these do very good against well, mostly they do pretty good against a Ravi, but a Ravi's just way too slow um, these days. And the fact, like, the fact that so you build counter on her and she's basically it's hard to kill her. But the thing is, frenzy stacks remove her HP, so you're losing damage. You're sure, you gain attack, but you don't gain that much. And then on top of that, you're becoming squishier to the other side. Um, and then on top, on top of that, you can build effect resistance on her if you want, but effective resistance means nothing basically. Um, because for one, uh, people who are built for CC are going to CC you anyway, so it doesn't matter how much effective resistance you build, they're just going to CC you. Uh, two, there's a lot of soul burn, ignore effect, resist if, ignore effect resistance CCs going around right now, so like Basar, uh, Falconer Clurry is a good example, um, what's her name? Lilius is another good example, and there's probably, you know, there's a few other ones. Uh, but then on top of that, further, like, making effect resistance kind of worthless is the idea that uh, in RTA, you gain free effectiveness like without even worrying about it. So the thing about Ravi is the ability to do what a Ravi does where she counters and heals and stuff like that, in addition to being able to boost herself and turn, take extra turns. Um, and then, you know, obviously there's the S3, which is like a team-wide, not only is it a team-wide like um, stun, but it's also a team-wide like just damage to everyone. 
just makes her very threatening because the, th the other thing with a ravi is she can't she can't hit landy's because landy's stealth she can't hit um what's her name uh the, the little uh t sirens because again t siren stealths she can't hit uh Spectre Tenebria, because Spectre Tenebria is always stealth. So the thing with, with Ravi, she's just like overall more impactful in the shorter term. And unfortunately, the problem with uh, the shorter term and the long term, because she gains a huge amount of attack from her passive, as well as gaining a huge amount of attack from Frenzy and whatnot. So uh, I didn't mean this to be an A, an a Ravi thing. It's just one of those things where it's like my explaining why I'm so like... Uh, underwhelmed by uh, a Ravi and, and why I'm not too concerned about uh, pulling her you know, whenever she comes out next. Uh, so yeah, we pulled uh, we pulled her. We got we went all the way to pity. Um, I forget. Let's see pity times. So ten thousand bookmarks is one pity, right? So five, yeah, five times two hundred fifty. Five times two hundred is one thousand, and fifty times two hundred is uh, ten thousand. All right, so 10,000, so I'm 20% of the way to pity <laughs> for the next one. Um, I think hopefully by the time her banner's over and by the time ML Calric's banner is over, I have, I'm like maybe halfway to pity. And then, because ML Calric, and then there's a, a, there's going to be a re, uh, a re whatever. Uh, um, someone's going to, they're going to repeat, right? Someone who's been here before is going to come back after Calric. Um, hopefully at least, well probably by that point depending on who it is um, I'll probably have halfway to pity after that 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 repeat after Calric um, to be able to spend on like whoever the new one is that's after that um, but yeah so that's kind of my plan is budgeting it around like these this time frames and that's kind of what you want to do is make sure you have all your stuff um, scheduled and budgeted accordingly uh, what else what else are we gonna do Oh yeah, that's right. Hold on, we have a thing over here somewhere. Let's go take a look at that. This thing here. We have like a ticket, I think, right? Maybe it's not done yet. Oh, okay. So we're not quite there yet. I was gonna show this uh, ticket here. I forgot what I got out of this one and uh, this other one here, but whatever. Uh, so there we go. We've got a uh, little Queen Charlotte. So hopefully you guys don't go to pity on your um, <laughs> on your Mystics. You know what would be worse? So for those of you who play uh, Genshin, you know that the time it takes for you to pity a character in Genshin on regular, well not regular, right? Because it's regular, and then there's uh, limited, the, whatever the special banner. The I don't know. They use the little rainbow orbs, is what I'm gonna call them. Um, the time it takes to get a pity there is about uh, about half the time it takes to get. So by the time it takes you to get 5k mystics is about a pity over there. Um, and that's like, like here, well, here is free, right? You can, you know, you can buy mystic packs, but other than mystic packs, there's really no other ways to get, um, there's really no other ways to pay for, um, uh, uh, mystic medals, right? Because uh, the reason I say that is because so if I buy Skystones or like a monthly pack, right? Like one of these. Let's go take a look at them. And this is this is just me ranting, right? So you can just kind of leave at this point. But I well, probably would have already left. But anyway, the point is, um, these Mystic packs. Oh, you can piss off. Where are we? So mean? right, there's there's Mystic packs. So you can obviously buy these and and get more Mystic medals. Um. Like if you buy this and and you get like sky stones every day or whatever and you just stockpile them and stuff like that, if you get this, if you get these, um, they give you more sky stone and then more sky stone converts into um, uh, bookmarks. Now you can convert sky stone into mystics through here, but that's not what I mean. What I mean is you can come over here and literally just spend all your bookmark, all your mystic medals on more bookmarks. If I can find where that thing is, where is it? Here, right? So you can just buy these packs. You can't do that with Mystic Medals. You have to kind of run your luck at the uh, secret shop. Um, the reason I say this is because Mystic Medals are free, and there's really nothing you can do to pay for more of them. Um, and even at that rate, like I said, you get about 5,000. You get about half a pity um, for Genshin. 
half a pity you get half a pity here and that's how long it takes to get a full pity in genshin just about uh the problem is though in genshin to get that level of like all right we've got to pity a character you have to like not only buy the battle pass but you also have to like uh buy the monthly pass and then you have to hope there's content being released while you're playing because if there's no new content you're not getting any more primo gems because you already took them all right so the main point being that um after like there's no way to really free to play pity the the units you want in in genshin um compared to here where it's a little easier it's not again it's not it's not hard it's not easy but it's definitely not like impossible uh but in genshin you still have a, like imagine if you were here uh let's go to let's go here like imagine you were you were here pulling for lqc and then you had a 50 percent chance to just get like an rgb five star hero now it is 50 50 because of this right uh normally that's if that's for getting it early when it gets down to that 200 pity like you're guaranteed the character now you could say um that well okay so if, if it's half a pity here basically it's hard it's hard to like talk about it without using like visuals basically what i'm saying it takes five you know the, the amount of time it takes to get 5k here uh is it 5k yeah 5k mystics here which is half a uh, mystic pull half a mystic pity that's about how long it takes to get one full pity in the limited banner in genshin right so we have that established however in genshin you have a 50 50 chance of not getting the unit you want uh, so basically you just get screwed over by rng um here you can kind of say the same thing where it's like you don't even get a, a guaranteed five star because over there you get a five star guaranteed you just don't get you know there's a chance you don't get the one you want here you don't even get a five star guaranteed in, in the first hundred summons right there's no guarantee of that um, my point being though is that this game has a lot more like resources on the way to getting this 5k or 10k mystic pity uh, you've gotten a bunch of these bookmarks you've gotten a bunch of these bookmarks to, to possibly get a chance at one of these five star heroes right um, you've probably gotten a few of these and when these units come out you have a chance you, you, have, you can pity them um, if, if all you focus is on is grinding this you'll have a lot of other options unfortunately when it comes to genshin the only thing you're pulling on is the limited banner um yeah there's really nothing else in that game to pull on so all your resources get dumped into that like imagine you could dump all your regular bookmarks and all your sky stone into mystic metals then the, the it would be even right the reason they can the the reason you can get so much of this stuff is they they spread it out evenly uh, but if they were to dump all those resources into if you were to somehow be able to dump all your resources into mystic metals then I think it'd be faster, right? You'd, you'd certainly get, you'd certainly reach that 10k pity mark a lot sooner than you would with the, um, like, a Genshin pity. But that's even free to play here. Like, free to play, you can hit half a half a Mystic pity, um, like, you know, pretty decent amount of time. Not like, not super fast, but a decent amount of time. In Genshin, you can't even reach, like, a character pity, which is a 50 50 again without having to buy all this extraneous stuff, which is kind of, you know, insulting to a large degree, but it is what it is. Anyway, that was my little rant, um, thinking about, like, Mystic Summons and whatnot and how all that stuff works and how, uh, when it, when, when a game, I don't know, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, when a game tells me that this is the pity, uh, this is the pity, right? Like, 120 to get her and that's it. That's all you gotta do. Just save up that and it lets you budget. Um... <laughs> unfortunately because genshin doesn't have anything like that now genshin has that on the second summon but that just doubles the amount of like imagine like ha like every time a new unit came out you had to get 240 you had to budget out 240 summons for that character like that would be ridiculous you would need 1200 bookmarks for every new character that comes out um right so i don't know maybe maybe it's just me maybe i just complain too much but uh, that's kind of my my thoughts is one of the interesting things about this game is how easily they uh they allow you to sort of you know keep pace with people um in terms of you know yeah, just playing in general right so that's that's pretty interesting um and also he has like a galaxy bookmark right here in his hand I don't know, it just looks like that to me like look at this thing this is this right here that right there can't tell me it doesn't look like a galaxy bookmark anyway oh uh, yeah that's it for today um there's my little uh, Genshin rant and why I uh, stopped playing that game. Um, yeah, there's just no, there's no winning in Genshin really. Um, 
it's just insanely boring for one i mean it, it's pretty fun but like you lose you run it for one i mean i don't know I, i'm not gonna go into like a whole review of it i mean like here, here's the deal if you know the problems that genshin has and you know well if you play the game you know the problems it has the question is how long are you willing to put up with those problems and a lot of people are willing to put up with it longer and a lot of us aren't um basically that's what it is and obviously epic 7 has you know problems and, and fire emblem has problems and it's like any game right so that's just the way it is just my thoughts on it where it's like all the problems the main point i want to make is like there's no reason to make a video like that because like all the problems for these games are self-evident um, so it's not a question of like, oh, what are the problems with this game? It's it's how how willing are you to deal to to sort of suffer through them, um, or not suffer, but you know what I mean, just kind of power through them. Um, and uh, my my tolerance for that is just kind of interesting because like, <laughs> considering I play Fire Emblem and Epic Seven, my tolerance for that is is pretty low. So uh, Genshin unfortunately couldn't uh, make the make the cut. Now a lot of people can say if you if, like if you take a look at epic 7 from the beginning to where it is now it's it's drastically different like we didn't have pities for for standard banners right like i don't even yeah i think yeah no i mean i i know for sure we didn't have pities for standard banners but i feel like at some point there wasn't pities for limited banners but i think there's there's always been uh limited banner pities i'm not entirely sure though um but yeah, like the, the point is that there's there's now like this stuff here. We we get a lot more mystic medals these days, uh, lots more moonlight summons, um, a lot more Molagora, Which for those of you you know, for one, it's like, can you imagine like we're getting easily like three to four times the Molagora we used to get, uh, like a monthly basis, like weekly it's twice as much, right? Because we have um, it used to be only two, one from the shop and then one from the guild. Uh, but now we have two. Wait, did we? Was it two or three? I think it was three. I don't know. But anyway, we have like you know, but we have the automaton tower, which gives you a bunch. We have uh, the world boss, which has a chance to give you some. Um, apparently now the uh, let's take a look here. This looks. I don't know what. So when I first saw this, I don't know what you guys saw, but this looks really, like, sketch. <laughs> like, I don't know, like, the way he's kind of, like, crouched over her like that, and she's, like, uh, <laughs> bent over a table. Uh, she's sitting, obviously, but... And then I saw the the, the little um, the, the little uh, blanket he's putting on her. Anyway, my the, the point is, I, I, I'm a scumbag, and I saw this. I took this a totally different way when I first came in here. I was like, dude, what? How why is this here who did this why did they put this in the game and then i i looked at it i was like oh okay oh that's not what's happening okay never mind <laughs> never mind um but what i wanted to point out here was this was now we get apparently i mean who knows maybe going forward i'm not entirely sure apparently we're getting two molagora in some of these uh, web events which is pretty cool um, so the my point being that like epic 7 in a, in a decent amount of time has grown a lot uh, compared to what it used to be um so maybe in like a year or two uh genshin might be somewhere better but i think how poorly they handled this like it's almost been out for like a year i think i actually have no idea i should go search that but at least like six months that's like half a year and in half a year they haven't made any progress all they've done is release new characters um and at a rate at an increasingly low rate mind you like one every one new one every two months and they're already cycling through repeats and again like i said they don't give you nearly enough to do anything like not to play not to summon not to do anything um i don't know it just seems very strange uh my point being that um genshin might get better but how poorly they've handled this first uh ha six months and probably the next six months so the first year of of their game um i'm probably not gonna go back right because as, as bad as like epic 7 was that first year and as bad as fire emblem well fire emblem wasn't even that bad but it was still you know i mean it's gotcha right so it's always bad so it's all relative but uh both epic 7 and fire emblem as bad as they were year one um they were still tolerable like you played them right they were enjoyable to play anyway so for those of you out there who are who are playing under the illusion of like i'm, I'm playing now to like 
for when the game gets better later and it'll be whatever like don't do that like just play something that's good now and then if it's better later by all means right it's only improvements because if you're playing something that sucks now and you're waiting for the game to get normal like that's like a huge waste of time like i don't know maybe maybe i'm just older and like wasting time on stuff i don't really care to do anymore is kind of um characterizing me a little more um but yeah that's just kind of something like i'm not even that old i'm like 25 so um but yeah just like doing stuff that sucks now because it'll get better later it's just not my thing and and hopefully uh those of you out there um aren't falling into that trap of like oh yeah it'll, it'll improve because uh, it, it, it honestly it probably won't I mean it will but you're only getting I mean <laughs> imagine spending all your time and energy into like achieving normality <laughs> it's like great we, we've been here for two years and we're finally at a place where the game is normal <laughs> right um, but yeah so I, like I said for those of you I mean you know you for those of you who were just here for the summoning you already left uh, for those of you who want to hear me rant here you are but uh, I guess I'll uh, I'll leave you all there with that um, I might, I'm probably just gonna, uh, film my Guild War today, just cause, uh, you know, we've got a lot more new units, I've got a bunch of inter interesting stuff I wanna try out, and all kinds of, you know, just, just, you know, interesting stuff going forward, so, I'll probably, um, uh, film Guild War, and then we'll, we'll go from there, um, but yeah, so, till, till then, we'll see you guys.